So good morning. Okay. So I hope you are able to see these. Uh, just go through your notes with respect to uh, you know construction of a carry lookout adder that we saw in last class. And now you are in a position to appreciate how carry lookout adder can do addition of two n bit numbers in log n time. While a carry ripple adder will take n n units of time. Right, and uh, we stopped with uh, what is the total area required? Is it order n or order n log n? So did uh, somebody look into it? I said the size is still order n. Is this a correct statement or a wrong statement? Please note that the zeroth stage or a zero right is useless after doesn't do any computing at all. This. So, this stops here, there is no need for computing it beyond this point. For the first stage, there is no need for computing beyond this. So, these two are empty in the after this first stage or second stage, whatever you call. And in the st these three are empty here and uh, four are empty, right. So, please note that. If you go back to the previous uh, slide, in the 0th stage, only 0 points to 0 and 1 has reached this. The moment you start pointing to this, then after that you do not need this, correct? Right? At the end of first stage, this is already two, two entries are pointing to this. So, if I take the nth element, so how do you analyze this size? If I take the nth element or if I take the kth element, when will, when will it reach this? So every time it is going to point to some entry which is twice as far as what it was pointing earlier. For example, this was pointing 1 before it, in the next stage it will point to 2 before it, in the next stage it will stop point to 4 before it. And it actually becomes useless for computing, meaning there is no constructive computing necessary after it starts pointing to the last element, correct? So every time I double the distance to which I uh, point to. And if I point to the last element, then after that I, there is no computation left for me. So how much time will I take to point to the last element or how many steps will I take to point to the last element? For, huh? Log of? If I am the kth element, how many steps will I require to go and reach the first element? Every time I am reaching double the distance, huh? double the distance. So first time pointing to 1 before me, next 2, next 4, next 8, like that how, how much time will I take to reach k, log k, right? So, so I need log k computation, so I need to be repeated for log k times, right? After that, it is just that value can keep propagating. So the circuit, actually I need a circuit for computation of that star operator, correct? That circuit needs to be replicated log k times for, a, for the kth element. So how many such replications I need? Can I now write it as a formula? So for the kth element, I need log k replications. At least in log k steps, I need that circuit to repeat, right? So what is the total number of repetitions? Note that this is the same star operation. So what is the total number of repetitions? Sigma k equal to 1 to n log k, some seal we can put. So this can be approximated to can we do this? Sum is Right? So this should be less, certainly less than or equal to this because we are only interested in discrete points while this is a continuous function. Okay? So how do you integrate log x dx? X log huh? x. X log x? X log x. And this will go from 1 to n. Okay? So, so this will be order. n log n minus n, okay, so that is fine. 
or n into log n minus 1, this will be still order n log n. Okay. So this is wrong. Okay. <coughs> Fair enough? Are you able to follow this? Okay. Good. So I want you to find, see I have voluntarily introduced errors in my slides. Okay. I want you to find out where the errors are. Okay. And I may ask you a quiz question on, see I do not take attendance, but the way I ensure attendance is that I will ask one quiz question on, um, you know, what are the errors in my slide. Okay. Right. Okay. Now we will go into the next in important operations in uh, uh, computing, namely multiplication. Okay. Now, how do we multiply? So let us go here. Suppose I want to multiply 95 into 4, uh, 95 into 14. Okay. So I just say 4 plus 4 into 5, 20, 4 into 9, 36, 380, correct? And then 95, then I sum it. Fine? Is it okay? Right? So, each one of this is a partial product. Then you actually sum up the sum of all partial products. So, high school multiplication involves two steps. One is generation of partial products and two summing up the partial products. Fine? Are you able to understand this? Now, Entire multiplication should concentrate on how effectively we can do this or how quickly we can do this. Right? So there are several algorithms that are uh, reported. Let us not bother so much, but we will we'll introduce the latest algorithm. So what we will be te uh, teaching in this class is called a Wallace tree multiplier. Okay? Fine? So, please understand that I need to generate partial products and I need to sum up these partial products. And please note that this is not decimal arithmetic, we are going to handle it in binary. Okay. So, let us say I want to multiply right. So, what are the partial products here? I take this 0, I take this 0 and uh, and it with 1101. So, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1101, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Mm, uh, so, every bit of the multiplier, let me call this as multiplicand. Let me call this as multiplier. Okay. So, we take every bit of a multiplier and multiply with the mm, every bit of the multiplier and multiply with the multiplicand or and it with the multiplicand. So, we do what we call as a Every bit of the multiplicand get and with one of the bits of the multiplier. Next this, next this, next this. Okay. So this is how. So these are all the partial products that we see here. Let me call it PP one, PP two, PP three, and PP four. So if the multiplicand is n bits, and your multiplier is m bits. We get m partial products, correct? We get m partial products and which shifts, right? It will keep shifting, 
right. So, the last one would be shifted by m bits. So, it will be this will be n plus m bits because this is n bits plus uh, n plus m minus 1 bits, n plus m minus 2 bits and so on, right. So, this is effectively these are all zeros as you see, okay. We can still fill up. So, I could say that we have now m numbers each of n plus m minus 1 which also to make this whole thing look easy, right. but these are all always zeros, these are all always zeros. When we actually construct a circuit, please note that we will not try to have uh, you know. Uh, some elements for these, right? Some circuit circuit elements for these, because they are already zero. So we, this is just, this is the answer itself. First, first bit of your answer is generated the moment you generate the partial product, and so. On. Is fine? Are you able to follow this? Okay. Now, any doubts in this? Right. So I generate partial products and I sum them. The way I generate partial product in binary arithmetic is to take a bit and end it with the bits of the other op other operand and keep doing it for every bit of the multiplier and then sum it up with necessary left shifts fine Are able to follow okay now suppose let us say so in partial product i get n N, n or m partial products and I am adding those m numbers. So, how can we add two numbers? See, so, so for example, suppose I say, so how can I add three numbers? Let us go and do this. See, suppose I want to add 1101 with 1010 with 1110. Okay, suppose I want to add this, right. For each of, so these are three numbers A, B and C, okay. The way I can add it is take each of this in parallel. The quickest way of adding it is let us take this in parallel, each of these columns in parallel, right. Let me use a, a full adder circuit with three inputs. It will generate me a sum bit and a carry bit. So, in so, this will generate me a sum bit as 1 and a carry bit as 0. I am writing the carry bit here, okay. This will generate me a sum bit of 0 and a carry bit of 1. This will generate me a sum bit of 0 and a carry bit of 1. and this will generate me a sum bit of 1 and a carry bit of 1, right. Now, you add these two, this will be 1, 0, 1, correct, fine, right. So, what is this? This is 13, 10 and uh, 14. So, this is 27, 37. So, this is 32 plus 5, 37 both are equal, okay. So, what did I do? I converted the problem of adding 3 numbers to the problem of adding 2 numbers because I have an adder which can add only 2 numbers. Now, what I have done? I have converted the problem of adding 3 numbers to the problem of adding numbers. And how much time does it require for me? One unit of time because I use a full adder circuit for this, correct? I use a full adder circuit for this. So, I use four full adders in parallel concurrently and immediately generate two, two numbers from three numbers. And those two numbers I can use any 
the carry lookahead adder and that. So, assuming that the carry lookahead adder will take log n time, so adding 3 numbers can also be achieved in log n plus 1 time, that 1 is the full order delay, is it okay, right. So, this type of an addition is called as carry save addition. So, every time what I did, I generate, I took each of these columns in parallel, generated a sum bit and a carry bit and I just arranged the carry bit one, with one shift to the left and added the sum bits to that. Right? So, so, I saved the carry bit for adding at a later stage. In this stage, I, I get the sum bit and also a carry bit which I save and I use it at a later stage for finding the result, right. So, so this is what we term as carry safe addition, right. Any doubts in this? So, the problem of adding 3 numbers get translated to the problem of adding 2 numbers by this carry safe addition and this we will be using for our uh, multiplier, right. Now, how can we do this here? So, I actually have 4 numbers to be added. I can take the first PP1, PP2 and PP3, right and I can generate what? I will generate 2 numbers, say let me say PP1 dash and PP2 dash. This PP1 dash and PP2 dash I will take and add it with PP4 to generate another 2 numbers namely pp1 double dash and pp2 double dash and these two I can use a carry look at adder and okay. So, the problem of adding 4 numbers right I can just in constant time I can convert these 3 numbers into 2 numbers again in constant time this will take order 1 time 1 full adder and again in constant time I can convert these new there are 2, two new numbers that are generated along with the old PP4 that I can convert into 2 times. So, in log n plus 2 steps log n for this addition this is again I can use a carry look at adder plus 2 steps I can finish off multiplication of these 2 numbers no, not log n plus 2 in this in this case uh, this is 4, 4. So, because you have n is 4 right. Now, now, this is the basis and now we will extend it for, I have just shown it for multiplying 2 4 by 4, uh, 2 2 4 bit numbers. Now, I will extend it for multiplying 2 n bit numbers, right and this is the basis of Wallace tree multiplication. Fair, fair enough, are you able to follow? Did you all understand what is carry save addition? Follow card? Okay. And how how the carry save addition could be used in the context of multiplication, right. I just gave this example here. These two are the things that I want you to understand here, fine, okay. Now, we will go back to, I will formally tell you how ca ca carry save addition works, right. So, given 3 n bit numbers x, y and z, the circuit computes a n bit number u and a n plus 1 bit number v such that x plus y plus z equal to u plus v and that is what we had seen here. So, let us see how that is. So, this is x. So, this is x which is an n bit number, 8 bit number and this is y which is also another 8 bit number. This is z which is also another 8 bit number. Now, I have generated another 8 bit number which is u. This is very important for you to note. This u is 8 bits and the v, v is actually 9 bits. Please note that this 0 is just appended. I shift the carry by 1 bit to the left as we had seen in the carry save addition. So, formally stating if I want to add 3 n bit numbers, that problem could be converted in constant time to a problem of adding 1 n bit and another n plus 1 bit number, correct adding 3 n bit numbers 
in constant time can be converted to a problem of adding 1 n bit and 1 n plus 1 bit numbers. Please note that n and n plus 1 are very important to note here because finally um, this is what we will use uh, to construct the final circuit. Okay. Is this fine? Any doubts? 2 n bit numbers, 3 n bit numbers become addition of 3 n bit numbers become addition of 1 n bit and 1 n plus 1 bit number in constant time using n full ladders. Okay. Is this is this clear? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So this is the basic circuit. As you see here, you will have n full adders, and each full adder will generate a sum bit, which we call it as u0, u1, u2, u3, u4, u5, u6, u7 and each uh, uh, full adder will also uh, generate a carry bit which we call which is v0 is appended 0, v1 will be generated by this v2, v3, v4, v5, v6 and v7 and v8. Okay. So u is a n bit number and v is a n plus 1 bit number. Yes. Is the input of the full adder like restrained to only 3 or huh? like 3 pin full adder or? Full adder means it is a 3 bit full adder. Oh. Okay. It is a just a module right. Yeah. It just has an XR circuit and a 3 N gate on, on R gate. It will generate some sum of 3 bits and the carry of these 3 bits. Right. Fair enough. So this is a construction. So please, this is, I am showing this slide to show that this entire operation will take constant time or order one time. One is constant. Okay. So, so we will very quickly go into the multiplier. So this is simple uh, grade school multiplication method. As I explained, we first generate partial products, and then in parallel. Please note that this is done in parallel, and then we do carry save addition which will give us this faster array multiplier what we call this faster array multiplier was due to valus and so we call it as the valus 3 multiplier valus is the name of the scientist but why tree we will just see very quickly why it's okay this is the same thing that i worked out 1110 with 1101 this is what we need to add and please note that we have generated four partial products M0, M1, M2, M3. We add these four partial products to give me the final answer, which is so. How can we go and do this? So, first, what we will do is that we will first add so I have M0, M1, M2, M3. We can do it as follows, right? Uh, we just add M0, M1. So, this is a very uh, naive way of doing it. We first add M0, M1, and 0, right? We get U1 and v1 okay so we add please note that we this is this is a dummy variable this is a dummy entry and these two are pro, uh, partial products each of 4 and 5 bits right so i add three numbers one of 4 bit another of 4 bit and another of 5 bit and i get two numbers one is actually a 4 bit number another is actually again a 5 bit number please note that if each are 5, 5 bits, I get 5 and 6, but since both are, two of them are 4 and another is a 5 bit, you get an answer which is a 4 bit and a 5 bit number. Now to this 4 bit and 5 bit, I add another number M2 which is actually 6 bits, right. So I get uh, uh, a 6 bit number and another 6 bit number, again 4, 5, 6, I get 6 bit numbers to which I add another number which is 7 bits. So I get uh, one, two 7 bit numbers which basically leads to 8. So this is a sequential way of doing this addition, right. So, so what we, why I put this slide here is to basically explain you how, how things can work here. So I have, I have 4 partial products to basically start with. I have 4 partial products and I want to add, this method gives you a sequential way of adding it. So I start with a dummy 0, 
m0 m1 so three numbers that gets converted into two numbers right but what i want you to note here is the most important thing that i want you to note here is that this 4 4 and 5 gives me 4 and 5 okay 4 4 and 5 will give me only two numbers which are 4 and 5 bits as I told you, if I have three n bit numbers, it will give me an n bit and an n plus 1 bit number. But if I have say n minus 1, n minus 1 and n, this will give me only n minus 1 and n bit, right? Or in sense n, n and n, uh, okay, this is fine. Now, I get a 4 bit number and a 5 bit number and a 6 bit number. This is going to give me two 6 bit numbers. So, if I have n minus 1, n and n plus 1, okay, I get n plus 1, comma n plus 1. Yes, okay. So, very simple. If I have 4 bit number, what is the maximum value I have? 15 another would be 15 right and so this would be 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 and if I have a 5 bit here right whatever be that 5 bit let us even take that so u1 is 5 bit number no no here 4 4 and 5 the first in the second side u1 5 bit number uh, yeah, so n, 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 n is 5. It is not 456, 556, five, right? No, this is, no, no, but this is 0, right? This is 0. Huh? Yeah, but in sense it is 4. See, when we are doing this addition, we are seeing a 4 bit number here. That is what I am saying. So, I, if I have, so let us, let us just prove this formula, right? So, if I have n, n, uh, and n plus 1, right? Uh, n, n, n minus 1, n minus 1, and n plus 1, uh, n. So, n is 5 here, okay? So, what, so I put even 1, 1, 1, okay? So, what I will get here? 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Hmm? The sum bit, sorry, 1, 1, 1, and 1, sorry, sorry. Okay, so this gives me a carry, carry, and this gives me zero. Okay, so what I'll get here, I'll get one. Right? Okay, so if I have n n uh, n minus one n minus one n. Oh, I get 6, yeah. n minus 1, n minus 1, n. Oh, wait, wait, wait. n minus 1, n minus 1, n. No, I am not doing the addition, right? n minus 1, n minus 1, n. This is n and n. Okay. So, if I have n minus 1, n minus 1, and n, the worst I will get is n and n because it is always 0 for me. Okay. So, this should be. Fine. So, if I have n minus 1, n minus 1, n, I get n and n. Is it fine? Huh? Nova, what should I get? What will I get? Yeah, phi. That's what I'm saying. N is phi here, no? Sum is phi and carry is also phi. Why? 
carry width cannot need not be 6 because the carry will be 0 for sure. This carry will always be 0. See, I have put 15, 15, and 31, the maximum I have added. Even for that, the carry will always be 0. Can you work it out again? My n is 5. I now say I am adding n minus 1, n minus 1, and n. Okay. So the first number is 4 bits, second number is 4 bits third number is 5 bits. This is a maximum I can give. Okay. Even for this maximum value, the sum is going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and the carry is going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Because these two are 0, the carry is going to be 0 irrespective of this. So this is just n bits and this will also be n bits, where n is 5. So this is 5 bits and this is also 5 bits. So if I am adding n minus 1, n minus 1, n, I get n comma n. Suppose I do n minus 1, n and n plus 1. Please note that I will get n plus 1 and n plus 1. If I am adding n minus 1, n and n plus 1, yeah, I have done it here. Now that we can prove that, I will just spend few minutes to prove that. Okay. Suppose I am adding, so let, let n be 5, so I am adding a 4 bit number with a 5 bit number and a 6 bit number, right? No, no, we will come to this. This, this. Is there any doubt or query about this part? So is there any doubt about this part? No, right? Is there any doubt about what I have marked on red? Is there any doubt? No? Okay. Now we will go to this. The second, n equal to 5. Okay. When n equal to 5, I am doing the second part. I am adding an n minus 1, that is a 4 bit number with a 5 bit number and a 6 bit number. Okay. Now, what will be the uh, some bits here? This will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay. And the carry bits will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay. So this will be a 6 bit number and this will also be a 6 bit number. Always this carry will be 0. Okay. So when I add an n minus 1 and an n and an n plus 1, I get 2 n plus 1. When I add just an n, 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 then I get n comma n plus 1. Okay? Is it fine? If I add an n, n and n, I get an n comma n plus 1 bit number. So kindly Please uh, uh, remember this, uh, right? So, so simple proof for it is, in this case, for example, let me try and prove this. This is an n minus one bit number. This is an n bit number, and this is an n plus one. Please note that, since it is n minus one bit, let us take the last three stages, right? N plus one, n and n minus one, the last three stages. So here, this number would be zero and uh, this will also be 0. The next this will be 0. Okay. So then I will have some bits here. So let me say these bits are A, B, C. Okay. So this can at most create one carry. right? So this can create one carry of 1 and if this fellow is also 1, A is also 1, right? irrespective of whether A is 1 or 0, no carry will be generated after this because the maximum I can have is, uh, right, right. So, so this can basically create me. So that's what is happening here. So whatever this creates will be a some bit here, okay. And whatever this creates as a carry is going to be one. So since these two are zeros, right, 
this, this particular stage will never generate a carry because 2 of the 3 bits are zeros, so I cannot generate a carry. So the carry will al this always will be 0, you are getting this, right? So that is a, that's a simple argument of how an n minus 1, n and n plus 1 can generate 2 n will generate only 2 n plus 1 bit numbers. Okay. So these 3 equations are very important because we use this to actually reduce the size of the entire circuit. Okay. So, so uh, kindly remember this so that uh, in the next class, uh, you know, one of you please tell me. So, I will write it down. This is the construction. I will go and talk about this construction in great detail in the uh, next uh, class. But just to give you a, a heads on, so I am trying to multiply two 8 bit numbers, right. So, I will basically get. M1, M2, sorry, M0, M1, M2, M3 till M7, okay, right. So M0, right, these are all the partial products. I will get 8 partial products, M0, M1, M2 till M7. That I will get it in constant time, right, using just I have to add each bit with the, uh, of the multiplicand with the multiplier. Or, or of the multiplier with the multiplicand. Okay, so so what is M zero? M zero is an eight bit number. M one is a nine bit number with one zero. M two is a ten bit number with two zeros at the last. M three is a eleven bit number with three three zeros. So M k is a 8 plus k bit number with k zeros at the, at the right hand side, rightmost k bits are zeros, right. Now I have 8 numbers, how can I add it? So I will take m0, m1 and m2, right. m0 is an 8 bit number, m1 is a 9 bit number, m2 is a 10 bit number. So if I add 8, 9 and 10 bits, I will get 2 10 bits. If I have n, n minus 1 and n plus 1, I will get 2 n plus 1 bits. Here n is 9, okay. So I get 2 10 bits because I am adding an n minus 1, n and n plus 1 or k minus 1, k and k plus 1. If I add 3 numbers, I will get 2 k plus 1 bit numbers, so I get 10 10. Now I am adding m3, m4 and m5. m3 is a 11 bit number. Uh, M4 is a 12 bit number and M5 is a 13 bit number, okay. When I add again 11, 12 and 13, I get two 13 bit numbers, okay. I get two 13 bit numbers. So, so what I have done is I had say totally 8 numbers to add here, right. I have now made it as what? 5 numbers. I took the first 3 numbers and made it 2. I took the second 3 numbers and made it into 2 and then there are 2 more left. So now I have made it as what, uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, sorry, 6. So 8 numbers I actually made it into 6 and how much time I required to convert this 8 numbers into 6 numbers? How much time did I take? Constant time because carry save adder takes constant time, right? Now, this 6 numbers, now I will take these 3 numbers 10, 10 and 13, okay. So 10 could be, again 10 can be treated as the same, k minus 1, k, k plus 1, right. 10, 10, 13, uh, carry, uh, 11 and 13 will be? No, 10, 10, 13 I can add, considering each, as, each one is as a 10 bit number, another is as 11, I can put, append some zeros there. You will be getting 11 and 13 bit numbers, 11 bit and another. No, for, for the time being, we will not complicate it because I have to go and talk about optimization later. So when I add 10, 10 and 13, I will get two 13 bit numbers, okay. The 10 bit number could be treated as a 11 bit number, this 10 bit as a 12 bit number and this 13 as 13 bit number. So I can still map this 10, 10, 13 to k minus 1, k and k plus 1. So I will get two 13 bit numbers. Now I have a 13, 14 and 15. 
again k minus 1 k and k plus 1 so i'll get 2 15 bit numbers so this 6 actually became 4 in constant time okay now this 13 13 and 15 will give me 2 15 bit numbers and i have another 15 bit number so these 3 15 bit numbers i can add to get uh, so this 13 13 15 i can add i'll get 2 so this 4 became 3 here and this 3 with this 3 it actually became 2 here and if i have two numbers i can add it to get this guy okay so so lot of redundant hardware is inside this circuit but one of the thing i need to prove to you is that when i multiply two 8 bit numbers i will get a 16 bit number as an answer right if i did not do if i just say that it is 8 9 and 10 i say this is 10 bit and 11 bit right in our thing right if i add three n bit numbers then i get an n and n plus 1 bits so if i just go and say this 8 9 10 i can consider them as 10 bit numbers right and i say if i add three 10 bit numbers then you can say that this will get 10 and 11 bits well this will get 13 and 14 bits and if you start expanding this answer will not be 16 bits it will be much larger right you will see zeros only but when i when i when i just delineate this uh, when i just uh, expand this it will become a 19 bit or a 20 bit it will not become 19 or 20 bit that's why i spent some time to explain you the the previous slide where this if if everything is not n then i will get only uh, n n n or n plus 1 n plus 1 so that is this is what we uh, basically saw in the previous thing so from that if you see that 8 9 10 will give me 10 10 11 12 13 will give me 13 13 14 15 is there now this 10 10 13 will give me 13 13 this will give me 15 15 and then i add this and i get this okay so finally i get a 16 bit number as an answer right now what we will do in the next class is two things we need to do what is the time complexity so now you see it is a tree right it's almost a tree that's why we call it as a valus tree multiplier okay now we see this is a tree now what is the height of this tree the height of this tree is the depth of the circuit right so we will now go and prove what is the height of this tree and also we will put some effort to see how i can go and reduce the redundancy here so a lot of zeros get added repeatedly in this 11 12 and 13 there are at least three zeros that get added here so now how will we, how do we adjust those zeros so how can i construct a much more optimized circuit than this right we'll see that this this i have put here to explain you the concept most importantly to tell that when i add to a multiply two 8 bit numbers i'll get a 16 bit if i multiply two n bit numbers i'll get a 2 n bit or if i multiply m bit number with a n bit number i'll get m plus n bits as an answer okay fair enough so we will continue this in the next class